Yeah. And each and every one of these attributes is so worthy of our attention, our meditation, and we will be so blessed if we will take the time to study and meditate upon them. Could you give us a quick example of how to meditate on just one of these, like something we're talking about tonight? Like how would David Carrico go about doing it? Because I know there's some people out there that maybe don't understand what you mean when you say meditate on. Is it just you just think about it for a minute and move on? Or how do you meditate on the omniscience of uh, the all-knowing God? Well, one of the Hebrew words for meditate means to chew. You just don't read over it, but you chew on it Mm -hmm. mentally and spiritually. And what I will do, I'll start with the scriptures and I'll start collecting the scriptures on the topic. And I will look at Sharnock or I'll look at Bunyan and I'll look at others and I'll see what they saw. And I tell you what, they see a lot in the attributes of God. And I will just start meditating and I will try I will try it to the word of God and I will meditate upon it. And my goodness, when you just sit and think, you just need to sit and chew on the aspect that God knows all of your thoughts, your heart, your actions. Hmm. Wow. And when we really come to grip with that, that's when we're changed. It's like Ezekiel said and the prophet John, Apostle John also, eat the word. You know, he ate it, you know, in a vision. And that's what we need to do. We need to eat it. And one of the um, Hebrew words for meditate means to chew. So we just sit with it. We just take a little time to sit down with the attribute of omniscience or whatever else we're meditating on. And we just let the Holy Spirit unfold that into our mind. And we just put everything out and we just give God our 100 percent attention and let the holy spirit just fill our heart and mind and take us to a new level and every one of the puritans had sermons and teachings on meditation they were all about it and if you don't learn the art of meditation uh you're just never going to go deep in the word of god and in your relationship you just have to do that because yeah because you're not when you say meditation it's 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 encompassing study and, and scriptures, and it's not just a lot of people get weirded out by that word because it, it's got an now it's got a new agey thing attached to yeah. it. And um, it's got yeah, it's got something. I'm just meditating like this. That's why I wanted to ask if you could just give us a quick example yeah, of yeah, how you meditate. We always want to clarify, and uh, like so many scriptures, meditate on the word, meditate on the law, and. In new age and occult meditation, you empty your mind out. You empty your mind out and you make your mind blank. And literally, you open up your mind to be controlled by spirits. Hmm. And you basically surrender your mind and your thinking capacities to spirits that aren't of God. And in godly meditation, you focus your mind on something. You focus, uh, like Paul said in Colossians 3 and 1, set your affections on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Meditate on our great high priest and intercessor at the right hand of the Father. Meditate upon the omniscience of God or his holiness. We are focusing our mind on something. We're not blanking out our mind. We're focusing our mind. That's the difference between a godly and an occult meditation. Thank you. you. Absolutely. 